Hi and welcome to Yab Numbers Guide to level 19 Twink Paladin Healer. In this episode we are having a look at a couple of bind on account item sets. There will be a starter set and an advanced cross faction set. And I am also taking into account that you can probably vote for items. So if you can't vote for items, some of this will be pretty hard to get. But anyway, I don't want to drag out on this too long. As usual, before we have a look at the set itself, I'm going to show the build. This is the build. It is 5 in Spiritual Focus, 3 in Healing Light and 2 in Divine Intellect. And Divine Intellect will faction in a little little bit in the stats. So keep in mind that I do have 2 in Divine Intellect and I also recommend this set right here. This is uh, 5 in Spiritual Focus, 3 in Healing Light and 2 in Unyielding Faith. And I actually think that this uh, talent build is a little bit better than the last one. As glyphs I took Glyph of Holy Light and Glyph of Leon Hands. The professions are Herbalism and Mining. So this is the starter set. As you can see the uh, health and mana is very well balanced out. And the last starter set I built, which was the non binary account item set, I actually felt that the spell power was so low, so I had to pump up the spell power as much as I could. However, this time we don't really suffer from a spell power issue. We do have plenty of spell power, which means that we can instead focus on balancing out the other stats. So as you can see here, the stats are very well balanced. The set has 1257 health and 1235 mana. I think that anything about 1200 mana is fine, uh, preferably more, the more the better. However, I wouldn't go under 1200 mana, that is too little for my liking. So we have 104 spell power which also gives you 104 bonus healing. So that's not too bad actually, it's pretty good. I would say that uh, as long as you stay above 100 you're fine. What I did manage to do however is pumping up the armor quite a lot and this is with the devotion aura. But you should pretty much have the devotion aura on all the time anyway. This set gives 1567 armor which reduces physical damage taken by 43.75%. So that's not that bad for a starter set at least. But one thing to note is that most things for paladins are actually quite hard to upgrade and you might be stuck with these items for a long time depending on how lucky you are. So all these items will be available in the video's description with links to open WoW if you want to check them out. So the first item is Violet Hat and uh, this is obviously just a slot holder until we get Lucky Fishing Hat. It gives two armor and we certainly want as much armor as possible. But two armor doesn't really do anything. Sentinel's Medallion is the PvP amulet. It's called Scout's Medallion on Horde. It gives 6 agility and 2 stamina and I think it's a little bit better than the thick bronze necklace but that's really up to you. Pristine Lightforge Spoilers is the first heirloom in the set. It gives 148 armor, 6 stamina, 5 spell power, restores 1 mana every 5 seconds and has 4 resilience. It also gives 10% more experience so if you haven't locked your experience yet, run and do that now. So that you don't level up to 20 because that would suck. So there are other shoulders that have better stats for a paladin but they don't have as much armor and we really really want as much armor as possible because armor is our best defense. When you get your armor up you will become very very hard to kill. Spider Shilk Drape can be crafted by tailors, it's pretty easy to get but it can be a little bit expensive. It has 21 armor, 4 stamina, 4 hit rating and 4 spell power. And it certainly isn't bad, as a caster this is one of the best cloaks that you can get, especially because of the hit rating. But we don't really need the hit rating as a healer, so this is something that we will most likely switch out later. And of course I put 70 armor on it. Mystical Vest of Elements is also a heirloom. It has uh, 92 armor, 5 stamina, 5 intellect, it increases your spell power by 7 and restores 3 mana every 5th seconds. I also put plus 4 all stats on it. In the last starter set I took crystalline cuffs which have uh, intellect and spell power on them. This was mainly to try and get the spell power up as high as possible because the spell power was very low in that set and we don't really suffer from that here so instead I gone with armor and stamina. 
The Cave Dweller Bracer drops in Ragefire Chasm, it's a very common item. It has 78 armor, 3 strength, 4 stamina and 15 spell power. Embracers will be very very hard to upgrade, this is something you might get stuck with for quite some time. Gold Flecked Gloves drops in Dead Mines. They have 25 armor, 6 intellect and 7 spell power. And of course I put plus 16 spell power on them. Girdle of the Blind Watcher drops in Shadow and Keep, it's very easy to get. It has 54 armor, 7 stamina and 8 intellect, so the stats certainly ain't bad. It's far from the best belt that you can get, however upgrading this will be very hard. Darkwave Breaches is a world drop, but they are pretty common, so you shouldn't have any problem finding them for a reasonable amount of gold. They have 35 armor, 4 stamina, 7 intellect and 6 spirit, and I put the heavy armor kit on them. If you want to use the heavy armor kit on your Twink's items, put it on before you give it to a Twink, otherwise you will be stuck with the medium armor kit. And it might not really be that big of a difference, but you are wasting armor and we do want as much armor as possible. Since I figured that we had enough spell power already, I went with the Savage Trodders that drops in Veiling Caverns. They have 134 armor and 9 stamina. And I put minor run speed on them which increases your run speed by 8. Mainly because I think that the faster you run the better, especially as a healer. Lorekeeper's ring is the PvP ring. The horde counterpart is called Advisor's ring. And if you can get both, I suggest that you try that if you can vote for the Advisor's ring. Or if you faction change, do pick up the other side's ring as well. If you can use both at the same time, I'd say that that is the best combination. Unfortunately that doesn't work on this server, but I remember that it did work on Molten Vov as an example. Lorekeeper's ring have 2 stamina, 5 spell power and restores 3 mana per 5 seconds. And I say that the best combination is uh, using both the advisor's ring and lorekeeper's ring. But since I can't on this server I went with the lavishly jeweled ring. And you might think like uh, why the hell didn't you go with seal of ring? And sure you can go with seal of ring if you want. And try to keep the health and mana as balanced as possible. But seal of ring certainly isn't bad. You normally get the Arena Grandmaster from the Gurubashi Arena and I remember doing that on retail. I would prefer not having to do that again because it was a hell to get it. However what you do is that you get the Arena Master and then you need 12 to turn them in for an Arena Grandmaster. I'm kind of counting on that you can vote for the Arena Masters and just go to the Gurubashi Arena and turn them in to get the Arena Grandmaster. If you can't do that then skip out on the arena grandmasters in this set and go with something like the discerning eye of the beast for an additional 7 spell power. Or if you don't play as a human you can switch one out for a pvp trinket, preferably the heirloom one since it gives a little bit of resilience. So yeah the arena grandmaster gives 12 stamina and can create a shield which absorbs 750 to 1250 damage over 20 seconds. It has a 15 minute cooldown which it of course shares. So if you use one, the other one will get on cooldown as well. As a main hand I took the Devote Aura Stone Hammer and this is by far the best one hander for a healer in my experience. It does 15 damage per second, 3 stamina, 4 intellect and 15 spell power so that's actually quite a big chunk of spell power and it also gives the correct stats. While well, it actually hits quite hard for a one hander. And I put 30 spell power on it so it gives a total of 45 spell power which is quite a lot. As an offhand I went with Arctic Buckler. And this is mainly because it is the shield with the highest armor in the game. It has 642 armor. This roughly translates to 12% armor mitigation at level 19 which is huge. I can't say if that goes for all servers but at least on this server it gives me 12% armor mitigation by just having this shield on. It also have 13 block, 3 stamina, 8 spirit, 5 frost resistance. And I put vitality on it which gives 4 mana and health every 5th second. And the last item in the set of course is the glacial stone. If you place horde and don't want to faction change then you probably want to get the bloody darkened reaper or the runic dark blade if you skip out on the dead skull shield. The dead skull shield is very good in a stamina build so, uh, so I wouldn't want to skip out on that. However I usually end up using the arctic buckler all the time anyway. And glacial stone is one of these items that's really worth faction changing to get. It's in my experience by far the best weapon out there for a paladin. 
It does 21 damage per second and has a chance on hit to blast its target for 75 froze damage. This also scales with spell power or at least it looks like that to me. And of course that goes hand in hand with a healer set since we are pumping up the spell power. And it procs a lot. It's actually insane how, how much this procs. So I also put fear weapon on it. Fear weapon does 40 damage and does not scale with spell power. However, it can crit, and these two together makes this weapon insane. It's, it's a beast of a weapon, and this is the weapon that I can really, really recommend. So, that was the starter set. Let's move on to the cross faction set. Alright, so this is the advanced cross faction set, and this is pretty much the best that I could build. It has uh, 1427 health and 1220 mana, and I feel that uh, 1200 mana is my bare minimum. However, 1200 or more is fine, obviously the more the better. And considering that we already have 1427 health, you'll probably reach like 1600 to 1700 health in Warzone Gulch when you are fully buffed. So that's not bad at all. Taking the armor mitigation into account that will increase your survivability by quite a lot. This set has uh, 115 spell power, so it gives you a bonus healing of 115. And as I said earlier, I think that anything above 100 is fine. This set also have 1831 armor, and that's actually quite a lot. This is with Devotion Aura, however you should pretty much just have Devotion Aura on all the time anyway. It reduces the physical damage taken by 47.6%. The first item is Lucky Fishing Hat, and I don't really have to talk more about this one. It has 15 stamina and it might take some time to get this one, but uh, it's one of the easier items to get in this set, so you should really get the lucky fishing at. And once again, Sentinel's Medallion, I'm not going to talk more about that because we already went through this item in the previous set. It has 6 agility and 2 stamina. Pristine Lightforge Boulders, mainly because of the armor. It has 148 armor, 6 stamina, 5 spell power, restores 1 mana every 5th second and has 4 in resilience. Tamaltus Cloak of the Sorcerer is the first bag reward item in this set. You get this from the bags that you receive from doing random dungeons. It has 21 armor, 6 stamina, 4 intellect and 4 spell power. And of course I put 70 armor on it. Inferno Robe is only available for Horde. You get it from a quest in Taran Mill. And this is one of the items that's really worth faction changing for. If you're thinking on faction changing, do not forget to pick this one up. This is pretty much the best caster item in the game. It has 53 armor and 19 spell power and that's actually quite a lot of spell power. However, it gets even better. This item has an item level of 40 which means that you can put plus 6 all stats on it and that really pushes this item above the rest. So uh, if you want the best item out there, I think that would be the Inferno Robe. However, you can also stick with the Mystical Vest of Elements. Most of the upgrades that you can get for a Paladin is pretty hard to get. Defender Bracers of the Eagle is a world drop and it's really, really hard to get. It has 76 armor, 3 intellect and 3 stamina and I put plus 15 spell power on them. So when it comes to Bracers there isn't really that much choice. These have the correct stats for Paladin and have a lot of armor and once again we want as much armor as possible. Defender Gauntlets of the Eagle is a world drop, it has 110 armor, 4 intellect and 4 stamina. And I put plus 16 spell power on it. Earthbound Girdle of the Sorcerer is by far the best belt that you can get as a Paladin. It's a bag reward item and by my experience this has an extremely low drop rate. It's probably one of the harder items to get in these damn bags. It has 113 armor, 7 stamina, 5 intellect and 6 spell power. Grant Leg Arch of the Eagle is also very very hard to get. These uh, have 157 armor, 5 intellect and 5 stamina and of course I put the heavy armor kit on them. Defender Boots of the Eagle is another really really rare world drop and when I say really really rare I mean that uh, I farmed the stockades and black Phantom depths for a year and I found about 3. If you get your hands on these Keep a tight grip on these ones because these are very hard to get. They have 122 armor, 4 intellect and 4 stamina. And I put minor run speed on them because uh, the faster you run the better, especially as a healer. 
We went through Lorekeeper's Ring in the last set, so I don't want to talk a lot about it. But it has two stamina, five spell power, and it restores three mana every fifth second. So because I couldn't equip the Advisor's Ring on this server, I went with Seal of Rune. Seal of Rune have three strength, three agility, four stamina, four intellect, and three spirit. And uh, hard counterpart is Seal of Sylvanas, but I think that the stats uh, on Seal of Rune is a lot better for a paladin. And I went with two arena grandmaster. If you don't play as a human, you might want to switch one out for a PvP trinket. Preferably the heirloom one since it gives a little bit of resilience. The arena grandmaster has 12 stamina and it can make a shield which absorbs 750 to 1250 damage. It lasts 20 seconds and has a 15 minute cooldown and of course they share a cooldown. As a main hander, once again, it's the Devote Aura Stone Hammer. It does 15 damage per second, has uh, 3 stamina, 4 intellect and 15 spell power. And I put 30 spell power on it. Once again, it's the Arctic Buckler, mainly because of the armor. It has 642 armor, 13 block, 3 stamina, 8 spirit and 5 frost resistance. And I put vitality on it, which gives 4 mana and health every 5th second. And the last item will be the Glacial Stone and yeah this is by far the best two-hander for a um, level 19 paladin in my experience and I've tried pretty much everything, I can't think of anything I haven't tried. So the Glacial Stone is great and this is one of the items that you should definitely pick up if your faction change. And if you're going to make a new paladin and you are thinking on going all out and being very serious about your twink so you are going to faction change to get the sweet stuff from both sides. Then I recommend that you actually start your character on the opposite faction that you are going to be in the end. So you only have to faction change one time. And that should save you around 30 coins. So that is definitely something to think about. So if you're a whore, this is one of the items that I really recommend faction changing to get. If you want to play seriously as a paladin. Otherwise I'd recommend going with the Bloody Dark Knight Reaper or the Runic Dark Blade. The Glacial Stone does 21 damage per second, it has a chance on hit to blast its target for 75 frost damage and I put Fear Weapon on it. So Fear Weapon and the Frost Blast together they proc a lot and this weapon can dish out a lot of damage. And that will be it for this time, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and maybe even learned something. Thank you for watching and see you next time.